you here to our worship service at the First United Methodist Church of Interlochen. I'm so glad you're joining us by way of your computer, your tablet, your personal device. And thank you for taking the time and making the effort to hear a message from the Word of God. It shows the depth of your spirituality and your desire to grow in the Lord to be listening to messages. And I certainly thank you for that and appreciate your time that you're given now. Just by way of announcement, Monday, May the 10th at 1 o'clock in the Parsonage will be the Ladies Bible Study. So if you ladies would like to go to that, feel free. If you need directions, feel free to call the office, 684-6511. And then also on Wednesday, May the 12th at 10 a.m. is United Methodist Women, UMW. That will also be at the Parsonage. So please take advantage of these opportunities. The Ladies Bible Study has a good core group, which is a strong support group. You learn the Word, and you're there to support one another in prayer. And UMW also, good opportunities for the ladies. Also, we have started back an adult Sunday school class at 8.30 on Sunday mornings in the educational building. That's directly behind the church, directly behind me uh, in the educational building. And so you can feel free to take part there if you'd like a little bit of extra time in the Word and in prayer. Let's open up now in a word of prayer before we look into the Scriptures. Father, I thank you so much that you are so good to each one of us each and every day. Father, I can't help but think about the words of Isaiah the prophet when he said, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of glory. Father, we are unclean, but I thank you so much that you clean us up through the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the truth that the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, cleanses us from all sin. And you see us now perfect through what Christ did for us. Father, I ask your touch on this sermon, your touch on this Bible study as we look at the Word of God. And I just thank you, Father, for today. The special day that is, as we honor mothers on Mother's Day. Thank you so much, Father. We look for your hand now. In Christ's name, amen. Folks, if you are following along with me in the Bible, we're going to be coming out of Proverbs chapter 31 today. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. It talks about the virtuous woman. And really, I selected this text through prayer and also through the fact that it is Mother's Day. And I'd like to say to every mother out there, Happy Mother's Day. Where would we be if we didn't have a good godly mother? Where would we be if we didn't have somebody that took care of us when we were little babies and raised us and made us the men and women that we are today? So Happy Mother's Day to every mother out there. I do hope your treat is special, your kids take care of you, your grandchildren, whoever they might be, and you have a really special day. Now let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 31, beginning at verse 10. Proverbs 31, 10. Probably this is Solomon writing here, or perhaps Lemuel. He's the one that starts out in chapter 31, verse 1. We're not exactly sure, but it was one of the two men. And he starts out and says in verse 10, a wife of noble character, who can find? Notice it's a question mark. It's a rhetorical sentence. He's saying these are the kind of people that are hard to find. 
She is worth far more than rubies. You know what I love about this first verse, folks, is it shows that what is really more valuable than money is people. And a wife of noble character is much more precious than a table full of rubies. You know, if we laid a table of maybe a hundred rubies out here on the altar table and looked at them, they'd be beautiful, they'd be red stones, they'd be polished, and they'd be nice to own because they'd be worth a lot of money. But you cannot compare that to a wife of noble character. And besides, you can't kiss rubies. You can't hold diamonds. You can't hold precious stones. But you can hold and kiss and, and give your wife affection. She can give you affection. So definitely a wife of noble character. Who can find she is worth far more than rubies? Verse 11 says her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Folks, the foundation of any good relationship is trust. Feeling like you can trust your mate and your mate can trust you. And if you don't establish a pillar, a foundation of trust in your relationship, you're going to be in for all kinds of problems as relationships go through. Trust is so important. And you know, men here in the congregation, you know how much you can trust your wives. She's been there for you. She's faithful to you. She helps you out. She's a helpmate and all those kind of things. You really lack nothing of value, do you? Because you have a trusting relationship and you have a wife of noble character. He goes on and says, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Many of you here have been married for 30, 40, some even 50 years. And hasn't you and your wife been such a blessing to you the whole time? You know, it's interesting when you go back in the book of Genesis, God was the one after he created everybody and created Adam, the Lord was the one that looked out and said, you know, it's not really good for a man to be alone. Every other creature has a mate and somebody to share their life with. I'll create a woman for the man. Caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and then made Eve from Adam and brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And God instituted the marriage covenant there between Adam and Eve one man and one woman. She was given to Adam as a helpmate to help him. And you men know you can bear witness to the fact of how much your wife has helped you out and done for you over the years of your marriage. She certainly has brought you good and not harm all the days of her life. Verse 13 goes on and says, She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. You know, back in biblical times, back when Solomon is probably penning this text, ladies made their clothes at home and they made them from scratch. So she would select wool and she would select flax to work and make clothes, to spin on the spindle and different things like that to take care of her family. Luckily, we live in a day and age now where ladies no longer have to make their clothes. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Kmart, you can go to any kind of clothing store and buy clothes. But many of you ladies know how many times you've gone and bought clothes for your husband, for yourself, for your children. I remember my mom and dad, the tail end of every summer, they take my sister and I to buy school clothes. And I couldn't stand that. To me as a kid, it was such a drag. I'd much rather be home playing, enjoying myself. But I had to go and I went along and I got fitted for school clothes. Two or three pairs of pants, three or four shirts socks, underwear, whatever I needed to make sure I was ready to start back in school. If you had a dollar for every time you've purchased a piece of clothing, ladies, imagine how much you would have right now. You've prepared clothes for your family. He goes on, Solomon does in 14, and says, She is like the merchant ships, bring, bringing her food from afar. One thing you've had to do is you've had to provide food for your family. Formula when your kids were babies, baby food when they got a little bit older, all kinds of meals you've cooked, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, every day, every day, every day. I don't know how that rhyme goes, but I know the last part of that rhyme I've heard before said, a woman's work is never done. The guy always needs to eat a meal, doesn't he? No matter how old you get, he needs to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you provided food for your family faithfully. 
I can remember my mother cooking good old country meals for us as a family. And I can remember cooking on the grill. My dad taught me how to cook on the grill to do the meat. But Mama was always the one with the, with the hard part of planning the meals, preparing the meals, and buying the meals, and then cooking everything up for us. So thank you, ladies, for all the cooking you've done over the years. Can't measure it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 15 says, She gets up while it is still dark. She's an early riser. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. Now this lady that Solomon's talking about is probably pretty well off financially if she has servant girls. And one thing I know about us here is nobody here has any servant girls. You've had to do your own work, your own self. But you've gotten up early, you've provided food, you've made meals and done all those things. God sees everything everybody does. And God knows the love and care that went into each meal. Every egg, every slice of bacon, every piece of sausage, every hamburger, every hot dog, every turn of the spaghetti sauce or the beef stew, whatever it might have been. God knows all that and sees all that. And I believe you ladies that have been good godly women and faithful mothers and, and uh, wives to your husbands, I think you're going to be rewarded in glory for all those things you've done. God promises rewards, and I think a reward will come along with these things. Verse 16 says, She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Not only is she a good housewife, but she is an entrepreneur. I remember my grandmother up in Virginia had a garden, and she would grow a garden, different garden items and everything for the family to eat, and the family ate all their fresh produce out of the garden. She also collected eggs from the chicken, and she also churned butter, and with her butter and eggs, she would take that to town and sell it, and she had a little bit of money she made from her butter and eggs that she would use to improve things around the house. So this lady is an entrepreneur, and many of you ladies have worked an outside job. You might have been a waitress, you might have been a nurse, you might have done other things, but you had entrepreneurial skills, business skills that you did, just like this lady here. It says she sets about her work, verse 17, vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable, and look at this, her lamp does not go out at night. She starts early in the morning and goes all the way through till late at night, and then finally, tired and exhausted, drops into bed after doing a full day's work. And I know, again, that many of you ladies fit that bill. Your work done then when dinner's over, there's dishes to clean up, there's laundry to do, there's things to take care of, and the Lord sees how faithful you're being. Verse 19 says, In her hands she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. Another reference to making clothes. She would be spinning a wheel and have a little distaff, which the thread would come off on, as she's sitting there yarning, making different clothes and things like that. Grass doesn't grow underneath her feet. That is for sure. I love the next verse. Verse 21. Excuse me, verse 20. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Many of you have helped many of poor people out through the years. Part of the offering that you give here to the church goes to the Interlochen Soup Kitchen, which we use to help people that need food here in Interlochen. Anybody can drive up there at lunchtime and get a free meal. There's no criteria, there's no registration or anything. You just drive up and a free meal is provided to you for at that soup kitchen. A lot of the offering money we collect, we make a donation to the soup kitchen. Now also think about the thrift store. <clears throat> Many of you volunteer over there at the thrift store and you help out that way, helping people that need clothing. You can buy clothing very, very inexpensively. It's used, but a lot of it's in very good shape. And if a family has a fire or some kind of an emergency or a tragedy, they can come in there and get clothes for free. So truly we do open our arms to the poor and you extend your hands to the needy. When it snows, next verse, verse uh, 20, let me look here, verse 21, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She looks ahead, she knows winter's coming, and what do the kids need? A winter coat. I remember going and being fitted for a winter coat. 
And I wasn't too, I was pretty young as a kid, but I remember I had to go into the men's sizes pretty early. I was so blooming big. But mama always made sure that I had a coat. And you know something too, folks? A mother is a mother, and a mother is forever. When my mom got up in age, and she was almost 80 years old, she had to have somebody to take care of her, so I brought her up to my home to live with us and take care of her. But mama was still a mama. And I remember one day it was cool outside, and I was fixing to leave, and she said, David, don't forget to put a sweater on. It's pretty cold outside. I kind of chuckled to myself and thought, wow, a mom is always a mom telling me to put a sweater on, and I think I was right around 55, 56 at the time. But a mom is always a mama, and you'll always have that heart and love for your child. She makes clothes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. I couldn't help but thinking about our quilting ladies when I came across this verse. You make quilts. You spend time on Thursdays from 9 to 12 or 1 making quilts that we donate to the Ronald McDonald House to help sick children and their families. Also, quilts are donated to other people in need, the hospice ministry and things like that. All those stitches, all that time, all that material, God sees it all. And I guarantee you one day you'll receive a reward for what you've done. Verse 23 said, Her husband is respected at the city gate when he takes his seat among the elders of the land. You know, I've heard it said, Behind every good man, there's a good woman. And I believe that is so, so true. A woman that has loved him, supported him, and been there for him. Just as he loves, supports, and has been there for her, built on that solid foundation of trust. Next verse says she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Again, she's doing that entrepreneurial work to earn a little bit of extra money. You know, I can't help but thinking about this story, too, that I remembered as I was studying and preparing for this sermon. My grandmother up in Virginia that I mentioned earlier, she worked in her garden all the way up until the day she passed away. In fact, she worked in her garden, got to feeling bad, went inside and called my Uncle Willis and said, Willis, you better come over here. I'm not feeling too good. But about two months before she passed away, she was out in the garden and a copperhead snake was in the garden. Now, copperheads are poisonous snakes. And up in Virginia, there's more of them, I believe, than there are here in Florida. We mainly have rattlers down here. But there was a copperhead, and she went up with a hoe and killed that snake at 88 years old. But my Uncle Willis got up and said, Mama, you shouldn't have messed with that snake. He's poisonous. She said, well, Willis, he was in my garden, and I was going to get him, and I was going to get him out of there. And that's exactly what she did. She had a lot of spunk. And I know a lot of you ladies out here have a lot of spunk also. you got a lot of good internal drive to do those same kind of things. We go on in the passage in verse 25. It says she's clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. How can somebody laugh about the future? Well, if you've trusted God throughout your life, you're trusting God right now today, you can look at the future and be confident that God is going to take care of you, and you can laugh about what the future will bring. The future won't bring doom and gloom. It'll bring God's grace and blessings and happiness to you. And when this life is finished, we go to be with the Lord for all eternity. I believe that's when a lot of you mothers are going to see so many rewards for all the work you've done. You might not see it too much in this life, but I guarantee you, you will see it in the next, because God promises that. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. You know, some of the wisest things I've ever learned, I've learned from my mother. My mother was a registered nurse, an RN, and she worked as a nurse her whole professional career. She also was a good mom to us at home. And one thing my mother taught me, which is so, so important and sunk deep into my soul, it's my mother taught me to not be a person who was prejudiced. I grew up in the late 50s and the early 60s when down here in Florida, you had separate restrooms for colored people and white people and that kind of thing. And mama talked to me and mama told me a story that's really dear to my heart. And I want to share that with you this morning. When my mother was born in 1920, something happened to my grandmother, my mamaw, 
and her milk wasn't able to come in. So she wasn't able to breastfeed my mother, and they were in a world of predicament. So they went and hired a black lady to come in and be a wet nurse. And my mother nursed off the breast of a black lady in order to thrive and live. And when Mama told me that, that story hit me like an arrow, showing how people are and what God has used people to do. My mother would never have lived if it hadn't been for that black lady serving as a wet nurse. And Mama taught me to not be prejudiced, and I'm so glad she did. Because when I was 40 years old and I went into the prison system to work, I worked with black men, white men, Hispanic men, Asian men, mixed men, men from every different kind of background. And I learned to treat and work with men one at a time and not be a person that was prejudiced. Prejudice and things like that are so wrong, so evil, and we need to put that behind us and move forward toward love and acceptance of all. After all, doesn't the middle verse of John chapter 3, the one that's so important to us, for God so loved the world, God loves all people. And we have to realize like that and be like that too. I thank God for my mom who taught me such an invaluable lesson. Goes on in verse 27, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's always going, she's always doing. Mama is like an energizer bunny. She keeps on going and going and going, just like the scripture says here. Her children rise up, they arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Folks, it takes time after children are raised and grown and they're adults and they have the responsibilities that we now have to realize how important your mom really was. I have two pictures in my office of two ladies. I've got a picture of my wife, Carol, that's up on the wall. That way she can always be looking down on me and supervising me, make sure I'm doing the right thing. And I've got another smaller picture of my mom right there on my desk because mom always loved me and her life showed me the love of God as she took care of me as a young boy and everything. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And you ladies here today, you surpass them all in what you've done as a faithful mother and a good wife. And I love the little diamond that Solomon throws into the text here in verse 30. Look closely, if you would, with me at this. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting. You know, if we look out at Hollywood and we look on television and the different images they show us of what a beautiful woman is, it's nothing but outward appearance. Ladies are getting shots now to have their lips enlarged and look very lovely. They're having Botox shots around their eyes to try to get rid of the wrinkles and things like that. They're having facelifts, they're having tummy tucks, augmentations here, this off here, that off there, all trying to be outwardly beauty. Now, what does God say about that? He said, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. I don't care how good you look, you're going to slowly grow older and beauty fades. It goes with time. But the central truth, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Doesn't true beauty really flow out of the heart? And haven't you gotten to know somebody sometime and you found out how much more of a beautiful person they were when you got to know them in their heart? They were kind. They were loving. They were people that shared people that gave them themselves. They were optimistic people with an outgoing personality and different things like that. Perhaps they were on the quiet side, but they had a good solid heart. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she's earned, verse 31, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So give her the reward today that she has earned. Give her a pat on the back. Give her a kiss on the cheek. Give her a great big hug. Happy Mother's Day to each one of you mothers out there. I've been here now at the church 17 years. I've seen people come and go, and some of the best mothers I've known are right here in this church. A whole lot of what I call sweetie pies. Easy to get along with, smile on your face, 
willing to serve, willing to help, and you've done so much. So I wish each one of you a happy Mother's Day. I'll close this with just two brief things. The first one is that years ago there was a song on the country music radio that I remember hearing, and it really reminded me of some of the bad choices I made as a young teenager, and yet what happened through it. And the song said, Jesus and Mama always loved me. Even when the devil took control, Jesus and Mama always loved me. This I know. And a mother always loves her child, no matter what that child does, just like Jesus does with that unconditional love. And lastly, you might be sitting out in the morning thinking, man, I kind of fall short from all the things Dave was talking about when I think about it. Gosh, I don't know about that area. I don't know about this area. Let me read you something that I read in a commentary, which I think is so apropos. It says, some women compare themselves to the wife described in this chapter and feel inadequate. Actually, the woman of Proverbs 31 is a description of the ideal wife. No wife is ever or will ever completely measure up to all these standards. A wife should not fall into the perfectionist trap of striving to measure up to these ideal standards. This will inevitably lead to frustration and despair. Instead, a woman should accept herself for who she is and commit to allowing God to transform her more and more into his likeness. As she grows to be more like him, she will naturally exhibit many of the characteristics of this ideal wife. So don't say, man, I feel so short. Keep on studying the word. Keep on being who you are. And remember, God can help you develop those qualities. There's nobody perfect that's why Jesus had to come and die on a cross to pay for our sins. No man, no woman has ever been perfect, except for the man, our Lord Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. So I hope this has been a blessing to you as you look at the Word. And again, I wish you a happy Mother's Day. You ladies have done the job, and you've done it right. And in my mind, touchdown, you scored. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for our ladies here, our godly mothers, and what they mean here to the church and to their families. And I, Father, know that you say in the scripture that you keep books, the book of life. I know you keep these things and you record everything that everybody does. And I trust you, Father, that one day all these ladies will be fully rewarded for their life of service to their husband, to their family, and to others. I just pray you bless their day, Lord, encourage them, let them have the reward that they deserve. And remember, their ultimate reward will be with you when they meet you for all eternity. Thank you so much, Father, for our mothers, our wives, and these good godly ladies. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today and taking part in the message. And I hope it's been a blessing to you to use this to minister to your mom, to encourage her, minister to your wife, and the other ladies that are so important. Be blessed. Take care.